you ever tried to paint a self-portrait? If you haven't, I have a confession. It feels really awkward. I'm like, this isn't me, <laughs> but actually it is. I did a self-portrait before, but I was two years old in that photo and it's right up here. It's nothing to do with my adult version, so this was totally a different experience. And while I'm painting my self-portrait, I had the opportunity to compare pen pastels, which I most of the time very frequently use, with chalk pastels, which I tried for the very first time for this tutorial. For my real-time tutorials, don't forget to visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash And if you're ready, let's compare pen pastels with chalk pastels. By the way, I'm gonna start with the raw footage of my <laughs> story of how I took the selfie for this tutorial. So don't go anywhere. I decided to do my self-portrait, but I just don't have a good selfie. So I'm just gonna try to take one. Yes, I'm in my kitchen too. Like, why did I choose this place, you asked? Because I have a lot of daylight here. <laughs> I'm just gonna try now. Let's see how it goes. First, I want to show you my chalk pastel set from Faber Castell. There are seven to two of them, and they have really beautiful portrait colors, as you can see here. So I'm excited to paint with them. And on the paper side, I have clear fontaine black paper. For the draft, if you ask me how I did the draft on a black paper, it was not easy. I had a wax paper first and I just traced it from my monitor. Afterwards, I went over it with my pink pen because I realized the graphite will not show on black paper. Then I turned the back side of my paper and I applied white pastel. Once I went over all the major lines, I turned back my paper again. I placed it carefully on my black Clairefontaine pastel mat and I taped it carefully because we don't want it to slip while we are drawing our draft. Then with a different color of pen, I'm going over the initial draft again. I highly recommend you to check once in a while if it is tracing correctly or not. Once you're done, you can remove it and also remove the tape carefully. I'm looking at all the skin colors here. I have beautiful pink and peach colors. I'm gonna use those. And for the shadows, I have dark brown tones and I have this raw umber kind of greenish brown. I'm testing some grays as well for the hair highlights. Once I decide on my shades, now I can start drawing. One thing I realized, different from pen pastels, it just creates a more dense layer in the beginning. But my mistake was I pressed too hard on the paper and it affected the tooth of the paper so badly. And I'm gonna explain why much later. Another difference is that with pen pastels, I can actually make much better mixtures with colors. but with stick pastels, chalk pastels, unfortunately, these dusts, they were not as thin as I was hoping, so they didn't mix as well as they would with the pen pastels, but they still worked, so it's not impossible, guys. I didn't like the color of this shadow, so I'm adding a little bit more burnt sienna, and now it looks much warmer and much better. But I don't look very pretty here at this stage of my painting. Actually, you know who I look like? Um, I look like this nun from the horror movie. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but I'm gonna get better. Hopefully. We will see. After adding all these shadows and the uh, skin tones, definitely I'm going to go in and blend everything together with a Q-tip. But with pen pastels, I thought they would blend much better than I had the results with this chalk pastels. For the hair, I have four different colors that I chose and my base layer will be brown because I have brownish black color in my hair and of course for the highlights I chose some gray and also some raw umber. After adding all these colors and blending them together with a q-tip or my fingers then I'm going to add the black hair details. Before I add the hair details though I realized I need to do the background. Tell you what 
choosing the background took me forever guys i couldn't decide because i love bright yellow and bright green but when i added those colors it looked so fake it just didn't look like a real background i was like fine i'm not gonna do this i'm gonna change it but i don't know what to do so i tried some dark green Ugh, it just didn't look natural either so i went over it with my white and tried to tone it down and once I blended, it looked much better, but it was not still what I wanted. So I was thinking about what else can I do with this background? So I added some red, and after I added those red spots, it looked like I have a disco light <laughs> in the house. Like it just looked like I was in a club or something. And finally, what it turned out to be a, like a three-year-old's painting. Don't worry guys, I made my decision and I went with this pretty blue in the end and in order to create some bokeh effect, I just did some circles with white and I also blended them in a circular motion as well. I think this blue is pretty and I'm gonna stick with it. Finally, I found my color guys, I'm just so happy. Now I have the background, I can start adding all the hair details and all the flyaways, but before that, I need to clean my hands, they're pretty dirty. I highly recommend you to clean it with a wet tissue. One more step before I start sharpening my black pencil, but I'm not doing it sharp sharp. I am basically just peeling off the wood because once I put it in the pencil sharpener, it eats away the pastel. Here I add all these flyaway hairs, I'm adding all these details, but look at the black color here and compare it to the chalk one. Do you see the difference? It's much stronger with the Faber Castell chalk one. I loved this dense black color. So I guess I'm gonna stick with it for a while. I'm gonna lock in the main black parts with this. But of course, I'm adding my pencil strokes as well because this is hair, I need some detail. And when it comes to flyaway hair too, we will compare the pencil with the chalk one. Here I have the pencil in my hand. You can see that it is easy to do the flyaway hair, but I realize the pencil works much better on pen pastel backgrounds rather than these chalk ones. By using the sharp edges of this chalk pastel, I'm going to create thin flyaway hairs now and we can compare. See, if you have a sharp corner or sharp edges, it is easy to do flyaway hair with your chalk pastels. My hair is all around the place. Guys, this wasn't the best selfie I ever took, so apologies in advance. All the hair details are in and a little bit more highlights, then we can always blend them with our fingers or Q-tip in the direction of hair growth. Now, I feel like I look like someone else. This is a Turkish actress called Bin Nur Kaya, and I think I kind of look like her here. It's uh, much better than my non-example, so. I'll take that. This is the time for a little bit more details on the face, especially for the nose and eyes. In order to define the nose, I need to create shadows on the cheek and on the nose area. I'm using all these shadow colors that I picked at the very beginning, the burnt sienna, the raw umber colors, and a little bit of skin color. With the chalk pastels, I realize if I use shadow colors, and I forget to put the lightest tone right next to them, then when I try to blend them, unfortunately, it picks up the paint from the paper and I can see the paper color, which is very awkward to me. But if I add the skin tone, the light skin tone right next to the shadows, then I don't have the same problem. Just so you know, guys, this didn't happen to me with the pen pastels, but I don't know if it's the pastel difference or the brand difference, but this was what happened. Eyes were very difficult for me and I don't know why because if this was not a self-portrait, if this was complete stranger's portrait, I don't think I would have the same problem because I was just drawing and I was like, this is not like my eyes. It's very difficult to draw something from a photo but at the same time questioning it in your mind if it's correct or not. So I'm looking at this face for 38 years now and it was so strange to draw it or study it. 
One other thing to keep in mind, your draft will be erased while you're painting. So this also creates some difficulty because then you cannot see any lines anymore. And if you didn't put in all the lines or all the shadows in the beginning, then you will have a problem like I did. Now it comes to the lips and for the lip color, I had so many choices in my Carbothello set. There were like nine red tones and I'm just like, which one I'm gonna choose? So I chose the most natural and most lively looking one, the brightest one, and I think it was the right choice. These teeth uh, reminded me of Katy Perry in that, you know, the video clip the, with the braces in. Or, or, or actually even worse, it reminded me of this sea creature that you find in deep ocean. I don't look very pretty in here, I know. <laughs> but again, it's gonna look prettier, just wait for it. Adding the teeth with white actually helped a lot and I felt like my pastel pencils were not strong enough so I added a little bit of colored pencil. So if you have good white colored pencil like Prismacolor or Carandage, definitely I highly recommend to add them here. Now guys, I want to show you how I ruined my drawing for a second. Look at here. Yes, because I did the hair first, I kept smudging these black and browns onto the skin. So what can you do when this happens? You can just go over it with the skin tone and carefully blend it again. That's the best thing you can do or you can do the hair last. And once you erase, don't confuse it with colored pencils and then just don't sweep it with your hand because this happens. You can blow it away or you can go over it with, again, skin tone, that's fine. It's not the end of the world, but these are the things that you have to be really careful about. Adding all those shadows was fun, but one thing, again, to remember for you is Using these pastel tools, the small tools, are really helpful. Especially with pen pastels, they create miracles. But for me, with this chalk pastels, look what it did. If you couldn't see it clearly, it just removed more pastels instead of adding them in. So the black paper is showing. So instead of using these pastel tools, now I started to use my fingers instead because I realized when I use my fingers, it is lifting the paint much less. It's interesting. I never had this issue with pen pastels. I don't know if it's the pen pastel or chalk pastel difference or the brand difference, but this is definitely something I did not experience before, but now I did. Coming to the clothing part, I have gray tones and I added some white lines to give pattern. And here for the folding effect, I'm going to definitely use some dark gray, like kind of blackish gray from the chalk pastels and also some white. With the black pencil again, I'm going to add all these hair details on the clothing because you can see some of my hair is coming down on my neck and on my t-shirt. So I'm going to add those with my black pastel pencil. The key point here is to follow the hair direction. Is it going to left? Is, is it going right? How dense the hair is there? Is it dense at all? Or how many other places have flyaway hair? Especially if you're drawing hair on the face with black, you have to be extra, extra careful before you make a step. And as a final step, I blend all with my fingers. Now I ruined my painting one more time and I wanna show you how. So here I was just blending them and suddenly it smeared all these black colors on the face. I look like Scarface, guys, literally. And I was just so down with it. Like, why do I keep making the same mistakes? Oh! So what I did, I just softened it out first and then I added the skin tone and I added the shadow colors, the raw umber and burnt sienna and turned my painting around. I added the wax paper so that no more black color can be allowed in and I just blended them with my fingers again. That's it guys, I'm done. And if you look at the right side of the video, you will see that this is not a battle zone from, you know, Game of Thrones. It's just how I paint. But of course, afterwards I clean. So I highly recommend you to do the same. I hope you found this helpful guys. I'll see you in my next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. 
Thanks for watching my video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And for my real-time narrated tutorials, visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Stay with art and love.